You might be wondering why I'm wearing these gloves. That is because I am a forensic psychologist. I even got the glasses to make me look smarter than I actually am. So, I mean, that's a win for me. Pi is uh, 3.1415.9265. Right. So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the social implications. Uh... So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking to all of you about the social explanations, implications, and the aspects of criminality and how it affects society as a whole. I know. I'm trying to hide my excitement. Yeah. If you could describe a perfect childhood, what would it be like? Would your parents, forward slash, caregivers be wealthy? Would they stay together forever and never argue? Yeah, I know, I'm reading from the textbook. That's the type of quality content we have here. So, if you want to join the read-along, you can just um, open your edXL GCSE Psychology textbook written by Christine Brain, Julia Russell, and Karen Smith to page number... One one sixty eight, and the moment you see a picture of old man John John Bowley here, Bow Bowlby here, um, you know you're like in the right spot. I'm just kidding. The book's just here for reference. So the first thing on the list of things that could have possibly made you a future borderline sex offender are your parents. Or moreover, the things you have experienced with your parents when you were new. These things could include divorce, separation from your primary caregiver, or just straight up family size. So firstly, we're going to go over the topic that's on every white American family's mind, which is divorce. <laughs> divorce can lead to a so-called broken household. And children living in this so-called broken household can end up in one of two ways. Boys, for example, can tend to become more aggressive and tend to become more hostile and have a fiery short temper. Whereas girls, on the other hand, tend to become more depressed rather than aggressive. And this only doesn't apply for divorce, it applies for losing your primary caregiver at any point in time while you were young, to any reason. But unfortunately, of course, there's a catch. Nothing is simple in psychology, and there are multiple factors at play as to what behavioral outcome could be exposited from a child after their after some sort of divorce or anything of that matter. So, for example, if before the divorce there were arguments and abuse towards either parent or to the child itself, financial problems, what if the family was in financial turmoil for any sort of reason, or a displacement of a known location, if schools were frequently changed, or houses were moved before the divorce, or there was some sort of change in environment for the child, that could lead to extreme amounts of trauma and that could lead to a lasting effect which could lead to again aggressive behavior or um, depression. So segueing of that point we are met with point number two which is maternal deprivation. Children normally have that special bond with their parents and if that bond is broken until the child reaches the age of two it could have serious lasting effects. These effects are usually losing the sense of a safe world and feeling like no one likes you or feeling rejected and depressed. Wait. So this guy John Bowlby uh, took 44 little boys into a private room and he privately questioned them one-to-one -one about their parents and their relationship with their parents. He found out that 14 of these boys had felt no guilt towards the crimes they had committed and he also later on found out that 12 of them had been separated from their parents before they had reached the age of two. So as we see here, there are two ways to prevent yourself from becoming a criminal. Um, first, the first, first reason is um, have have parents and the second reason is just keep those parents until you're at the age of two and you should be fine. But wait, there's more! Another aspect of criminality, or whether you are a wannabe criminal or not, is family size. The third point in how family affects whether you're a criminal or not. Farrington's case study found out that families with more children are more likely to be linked with criminality and this is because more children equals to low income, which equals to lower education, which equals to your child probably being offenders and drug users. I'm in love with the coco. <coughs> it's really that simple. You got at least three fourths of your life to go. That's three more lifetimes to you. So don't blow it. 
Don't do drugs. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. McDonald's wants you to give yourself a chance. The problem with understanding how children turn to crime in regard to their parents and their family size is that there are so many complex situations that are involved in this whole idea. So, David Farrington and his case study in 2002 studied 411 boys from East London for over 40 years. The boys were aged 8 years old and he kept visiting them every couple of years until they turned 46. Everyone around them, from their mothers to their friends to their teachers, were interviewed about the behavioral outcome of this boy that was in question. And they found out through this longitudinal study that if a boy turned into crime, it was for the following reason. 1. Low supervision by parents. 2. Poor housing. 3. Parental neglect. 4. Harsh parenting. 5. Divorce. And 6. Low achievement in school. Now, now, just because one of those factors might be hashtag relatable doesn't mean that you're going to be a criminal for sure. But they do end up having an overall negative impact on the child's life, which could lead them to be motivated enough to turn into a life of crime. And the, and the results concluded by David Farrington and his 411 boys surely do support this idea and this reason to being how families and how the impact of a child's life can impact his life as a whole when it comes to criminal studies. So to all you kids watching this video, stay in school, don't do drugs, and hopefully you won't turn into a criminal. And to any future parents watching this video, hopefully after watching this video, your child isn't the next Osama Bin Laden or the next serial killer for that matter. And hopefully this video has helped you to complete your course in Edexcel GCSE Psychology because it has helped me. <laughs>